limestone quarrying, which was done out here in the early 1900s. However, we did have a few clues to help us rebuild this mill. The first of which was a book called The Young Millwright, which was easily available during the time period the sawmill was being built, and it contained detailed instructions and schematics on how to build a mill like this one here. The other hint we had was the dam over there, because there were remains of it. So we knew exactly where the original dam was, and that helped us to pinpoint roughly where the mill would have stood, down to around 10 feet of where it most likely was. So while we may not know exactly what the original mill here looked like, this is a very well-educated guess. The original mill at Mill Creek was built to supply lumber to Mackinac Island. You see, during the Revolutionary War, the commander of Colonial Michelin Mackinac, Mackinac City, Lieutenant Governor Patrick Sinclair, decided that that fort was not well defensible enough, so he wanted to take it and move it over to Mackinac Island, which is exactly what they did in the winter of 1779 to 1780. They tore down all the buildings they could, moved them over the ice to Mackinac Island, and they burned down any structure they could not take with them. Over on the island, they built Fort Mackinac up on the more defensible limestone bluffs, and they built a town down on the coast below. As the town grew and the fort became in need of repair, the demand for lumber increased to a point where it could not be met by cutting it by hand. And that's where a man by the name of Robert Campbell came in. Campbell was a Scottish immigrant who lived in this area for many years, and he came to this creek, the only one in the area with enough water flow to power a sawmill. And he built this here in the 1790s, and it would be in operation for roughly the next 50 years until 1843. So this mill here is a rather complex machine, so I like to simplify it down a little bit to start with. It helps to think of this mill as a giant motor that is powered by the giant battery that is the mill pond over there. So they came out here, built the dam in order to build up that giant water battery to power this mill, and what connects the two is the slushway. The slushway allows water from the mill pond to flow down into the crib beneath the floor right there. And this crib is over 10 feet tall and holds 1,800 gallons of water. And once it fills up, I'll spin this wheel here, which opens up a gate in the crib, allowing all that water to fall onto the flutter wheel. The flutter wheel will spin, which will push the pit man's arm up and down. This arm is connected to the bottom of this carriage, so when it moves up and down, it moves our saw blade, and it means we're ready to start cutting. However, this blade is stationary, so we need a way to move the log into it. And that's what these beams right here are for. So when this carriage here moves up and down, it moves this beam here, like so, which causes this beam here, which is rounded on both ends, to act like an axle and rotate a bit, which moves this little arm here like the pendulum on a clock, which pushes this arm here forwards and backwards. So while this arm is in motion, I use this lever here to lower that arm onto the metal teeth of the rag wheel, and it will push those metal teeth and spin the rag wheel, which spins this big wooden axle. This big wooden axle has grooves in it that the wooden teeth on the bottom of the carriage fit into, so as it rotates, it pulls our log forward and into our saw. We also need a way to move our carriage back. So when I want to do that, I'll first start by pulling back this lever here, so our carriage stops moving forward. Then I'll spin this wheel here again to close the gate in the crib so our saw blade stops moving up and down. Then I'll use this lever here to engage what is known as a lantern gear down there with the wooden teeth on the side of the rag wheel. And then finally, with the lantern gear engaged, I'll use this lever here to send water from the slushway down a secondary chute to the tub wheel. The tub wheel will then spin which will spin our lantern gear, and that spins our rag wheel in the opposite direction from before, thus backing up our carriage and allowing us to start a new cut if we need to do so. So, now that we theoretically know how this mill works, let's go ahead and see it in action. So, the first step to running our sawmill is to press the magic button back here that Robert Campbell wished he had to raise the gate to the sluice way. <laughs> Now, as you can hear, water is rushing down the slushway and into the crib. Once the crib fills with water, that water will then overflow, and that will be our cue to start the mill. So if we listen carefully, we'll be able to hear that any second now. 
right there. So that means our crib is full of water and we're ready to run the mill. So as you can see above me, that's the mechanism I was describing earlier in motion. And now to start cutting, I throw this lever. Observation deck, and I'll run the mill again since you look like from there. 